I was working with the John Barry Seven, which was a group, and we did the uh, the music film, music for the film Beat Girl, which you which you so charmingly mentioned, and also <laughs> s some uh, uh, other little bits and pieces. And Peter Hunt, who you see, is the editor on on those Bond films. He'd heard it, and when he actually saw and heard um, Monty Norman's idea of what the main title should be, he felt that it uh, needed the Beat Girl treatment. Uh, when uh, Peter Hunt gave John Barry this piece of manuscript, which sounded nothing actually really uh, interpreting-wise, like the James Bond theme that we know and come to love over the years, um, it, we we worked on it and played it and sped it up a little bit and put a little bit of aggression into it. And we finished up with uh, the James Bond theme, which now has lasted for 50 years. It's amazing, and I'm so pleased to have been part of it, John, and uh, I'm sure that Don's the same, that what we've been associated with is, is amazing that it's gone down through the years. Tell me, Vic, what did you get paid for that job? Uh, just check if my tax man's in the room. Uh, Fifteen dollars. <laughs> and and you've spent that now. I, I've just spent it. Yes. yes, I bought a new pair of shoes for the gig. Yes, yeah. <laughs> From the thrift shop. No, I've got. <laughs> you know, it's interesting that actually that classic guitar that you were playing. And most people think that that's an electric guitar. It's not. It's an acoustic guitar. No, it's, it? a, it's a, an English Clifford Essex Paragon Deluxe, which was made in London in 1939. And I bought it uh, from another fellow guitar player who was actually having a hard time. And uh, we exchanged cash for that guitar, and I've had that guitar ever since. Yeah, and, and it's, it's a, what they call an F-hole acoustic cello body uh, with a diamond pickup on it, which I think gave it... I don't know what you think from hearing it here. It's not exactly the same acoustics, but uh, I think it gave the tune an added impact, an added sound, which has, uh, again, carried it down through the years. You, know. you played on the Goldfinger score. Yeah, on the recording of the song and, and in the score, yeah. So you were, you were there when Shirley Bassey actually sang Goldfinger in the studio. Well, I was, what happened, because we got into the studio and uh, Shirley Bassey can be a little temperamental, She's, she's a wonderful artist, wonderful singer, and I admire her immensely. But uh, on this particular time, she was either stressed or John Barry was digging at her or whatever to get this song correct. And we went through it about three, four, five times, rehearsals. And then we took it uh, about two or two, three times. And I think, it, I forget who was in the box, uh, may, might have been Norman Newell or John Burgess, who was the producer, and they said, we need one more because the last note is not right. So uh, John Barry said, to her, "She said, no, come on, come on, Shirley, you've got, you've got to really try and get this last note." So anyway, there was silence because he was in one of these uh, acoustic booths that you couldn't really see her, but you could hear her. Okay, and she said, "All right, what's that? Welsh? Why don't you speak like that? See, one more time, and that's it. See." So anyway, there was a, a, sc a scuffling going on. It's like John Jones and her; they're both the same. Uh, and suddenly she said, this is it, here we go. And over the top of this booth came her bra, see. <laughs> so she'd obviously taken a little bit of tension out of her body and she, she, she got that last note, as you hear on the screen. 